Hi, Damon Stevie. Watch Level Up on Cartoon Network. The series <laughs> kicks off with just more leaks. So even though we think we've closed down the internet, we haven't, and things keep on leaking out. So every week, you get something fun and exciting from the game, whether it be a monster or a quest or what have you. And we just kind of play the whole game continues to leak and our characters coming together to take care of the situation. Yeah, and we were really sure in the movie because we wanted this uh, show to happen, to uh, leave that door open. So that's why at the very, very end of the movie, you see Maldark ap appear on the TV and, you know, laugh menacingly. And uh, basically, we're trying to say, it's not over yet. I think there's going to be a lot more uh, comedy, which is so exciting and really fun for us actors to do. A lot more action, um, some great visual effects. And um, yeah, we'll see, you know, not everything is all great between, you know, the, the, the crew. There's a lot of, you know, things that happen within the personal relationships as well as, you know, who's, who's leading the, the pack, who's leading the clan, you know, this episode or that episode. So there's, you know, a lot of personal drama as well as in-game and out, out of the game drama. So a lot of good stuff. <laughs> yeah, the show is a little different than the movie. Obviously, it's shorter. You know, it's a half-hour uh, comedy program, so it's a little more compact. You know, you have one story, starts, middle, you know, beginning, middle, and end. Uh, you have new monsters coming out of the portal. Uh, my character is involved. He helps out the kids solve the problems, and then eventually in the show, he ends up fighting some of the monsters with the children. I call them children, they're high school kids, but to me they're children. Okay, uh, expect a lot of high energy, <laughs> a lot of screaming, a lot of running, um, a lot of crazy leaks and even crazier ways of getting them back in the game. You can expect some extremely dangerous stunts that were done mostly by me. <laughs> so you can expect a lot more antics from Dante, you can expect a lot more problem solving from Wyatt. And Too you can much problem solving. Yeah. He can, can, likes to think a lot. Can, right. You can uh, you can expect uh, more of Lyle coming out of his shell and leaving his uh, jock world behind and embracing his inner geek. And it's fun to watch them as a team. And Amy too. I mean, uh, Angie. She really sort of steps up in the series and has a lot of fun. It's just fun to watch their friendship grow and their bond grow and watch them have like a tremendous amount of fun together. Angie and too. And, and, and like for herself, she really believes that she is the you know, the third musketeer, uh, whichever, you know, there's one guy that's out, I don't know, it, I guess it just depends on the day or whatever she wakes up, but she really believes like she is a part of the clan. I think there's some episodes where, or there's a few turning point episodes where you really see her value as um, as a fighter of these uh, monsters that come out, because at first I think she's, she's good with the investigation, she's good at facilitating the guys, but, you know, as the season progresses, you definitely see her take more more of a vital role, role in actually, like, van uh, you know, van pushing the the monsters and stuff like that but yes there will be weapons more than one that Angie kind of plays around with so I asked uh, Amy every, all of the guys have their own weapon that they, they created in the game and is she gonna get her own weapon well in the in the movie she has the fist of schoolage that fist and even though it's not hers from the game it will uh, reappear and it will be her weapon in the series. And one of the cool things about the Fist of Schoolage is uh, they just updated the game and it is now in the game. So the characters can, uh, the kids can go online and play the video game and I believe it's the Barbarian class that has the Fist of Schoolage and you can go around and just uh, kick butt. Well, I can't say for sure if Max is going to be in every episode, but he's certainly going to be around. Uh, and uh, yeah, he's heavily involved in the show because, you know, the characters come to him for help you know the certain problems they can't solve that he knows the code to you know but then you see the Wyatt character kind of step up and you know because he's such a tech genius that he's he becomes a bit of a threat to Max you know Max doesn't want anyone to you know uh, be more successful than him um, well Max is our secret weapon he is so funny and diabolical and He's, yeah, their go-to guy, but he's the most unlikely go-to guy because he doesn't like kids necessarily, doesn't like personal contact, and so you can expect to see him doing some pretty nutty stuff, but also helping out even though it might not be his first instinct. It's kind of nice that the, uh, the kids have a billionaire benefactor, you know, and, and all the goods that come with that. They're going to get a new headquarters where they're going to be able to hang out and stage from which is a lot of fun and uh, you never know what the man is going to wear which is another great thing because he has a very eclectic taste. And you never know when he might show up twice in an episode and that's just a little 
Easter egg for you. And speaking of that first episode, you have a Celtic dance number I think, yeah. at some point. Yeah. Now, did you have to practice? Did you know Celtic dance? No, I did not. And I apologize in advance for my horrible Irish dancing. But we did have a really wonderful teacher that came. Uh, I think she coaches like an Olympic, Olympic team, or not Olympic, but like a world national. That makes no sense. International uh, Irish dance team, and she really tried the best she could to make that work. But um, you know, it's it's difficult. We, there's like different shoes that you have to wear. So you don't wear like just normal jazz shoes. They have like a, a block that kind of makes it uncomfortable. Do you want me to redo it? Oh, okay, sorry. Um, so we had a teacher come in, and you know, she really did the best she could to make us great. The the great thing about it is that Galen uh, wasn't supposed to be good at it, so he looks great at not being good. I, on the other hand, had to be sort of good at it. So they got um, a foot double to do all the footwork, and I just sort of like learned where to hop. So I'm so sorry if you're a fan of Irish dance. I really tried the best I could, but it's really funny. I think that'll be definitely a highlight. It looked good to me. Okay. Do you have a favorite creature that comes out of the portal that you can talk about? Uh, well, at the risk of, you know, self-serving, uh, there's an episode where there's actually a Max uh, that comes out of the portal that is from a dating website. And so his, like, a character that is made for him that is kind of the opposite of what he's really like leaks out into the real world. And that was a very fun episode for me to, uh, to shoot because I get to play double roles. The first episode that's coming out um, on Tuesday at 8 on Cartoon Network, um, is, uh, it's called Barbarian, and there's this barbarian that comes out of the game. And I just, I loved working with that actor because he had no lines. All he did was like grunt, but he was so funny and he was so good. And I think it puts Andy, Angie in an interesting position where it's sort of like, um, you know, she warns the guys, like, he's not a toy, you shouldn't take him home, but sort of, then she comes, becomes really attached to him, and it's sort of interesting. I just love putting Angie in weird situations or seeing what the writers put her in, so it's kind of uh, interesting to see her get possessive over a leak, because usually they're trying to banish them and they're trying to get rid of them, but I, she wants to keep him, so I think it's pretty funny. Ooh, that might be giving away, because so, if, I, if I say who my favorite is, that might give away, like, one of the best episodes, in my opinion, but... We one of the one of my favorite leaks is a hamster, and that's all I'm gonna say. Uh, I think I'm not allowed to say, <laughs> but what, I will tell you favorite that leak? favorite leaks. But I will say that as far as monsters are concerned, there's something called the Hampire, which to me has uh, it's just super funny and really fun and just a great leak. And uh, I really look forward to everybody, you know, coming in contact with the Hampire. I'm, I'm going to go with my, uh, my son's answer. He's a six-year-old. He's a huge fan of the show. And what he always says when I ask him a question like that is all of them. And so that's where I stand, all save, of them. Save, a very save. diplomatic answer. Are you a gamer yourself? Yeah. I, oh, I, I grew up playing a ton of video games. Uh, probably hurt me a little socially, but that's fine. But now you can actually talk to people, which is probably good for the social skills. But uh, when you're playing it like alone against the computer, it's not, not the best thing, uh, best way to make friends. But... Uh, no, I played a lot of games growing up. Online video games is fairly new to me. I actually learned a lot about the online gaming community working on this show and, uh, you know, the World of Warcraft community and all that stuff. I, I had to, like, do a little homework in that sense. Uh, I, I play a lot of sports video games. I love statistics and stuff like that. So role-playing games and quests, yeah, that is fairly new to me, but I, I certainly learned a lot. Um, I am a very limited gamer. I'm limited to Nintendo 64, Mario Kart, Mario Party. Um, there's a jet ski one, Zelda. But I'm not. I'm not super proficient in the computer-based games. I think they're they're really advanced, and I'm sort of technologically not so advanced. But I have played with the guys before, sort of like a game, kind of like uh, Conquer of All Worlds. And I was so bad that they just um, told me I could just talk. You know, like be the hype person on the microphone. So I just pretty much try to hype them up and intimidate the other people that are playing them. So that's my job. That's how I play video games. I just talk a lot. I don't really do much. I am a gamer. <laughs> oh yeah. I like I um I spend a lot of time on Facebook like talking to people who play Conquer Ball Worlds online and like finding out what level they're on, comparing themselves to me and everything and you know, I'm trying to trying to get to where I'm at. It's level 63. So <laughs> I I remember I played The Sims uh, for a little while and uh, I had to stop because the Sims were having more fun in their fake lives than I was having in my real life. So, you can get carried away, so you gotta be careful. And, and if you could pick a game that Like and Level Up came alive, which one would it be? 
If I could pick it, ooh, I don't know, that's dangerous. <laughs> um, if I can pick one game, I think it would be Rayman. For those who remember what Rayman was, that game was awesome. I think if Rayman came to life, that'd be pretty sick. Some of those ladies in The Sims are awful pretty. I'd like to meet some of them. <laughs> they only spoke English. Well, maybe that's good. Maybe that's fine that they don't. Actually. Or like Sonic, maybe. Like if Sonic came to life, that'd be pretty cool too. But it would be, it would like kill off like a lot of things, right? As he's yeah. rolling. <laughs> he'd I don't know. be flying like all over the place. That'd be great. <laughs> that'd be pretty cool to see, right? What, what's what's the, uh, the the volleyball game with uh, the girls from Final Fantasy? Dead or Alive. Dead or Alive. Oh, I'm going to yeah. go with Dead or Alive just as a spectator. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I like volleyball. I'm a fan. And uh, I'd go for that. All right. I'm going to bring to life Uncharted. And I'm going to be Drake. And I'm just going to go around and I'm going to have those parkour skills and just climb like the side of every building, regardless of whether that's humanly possible or not. And since my wife might watch, might might be watching this, I'll change my answer to uh, World of Warcraft. Uh, but I want to keep. I want to be able to watch from the safety of a, uh, a stone fortress. Just observe. Uh, what would be your 30-second pitch to convince people to tune in and watch the show? Um, I think. People should watch the show because it's not really like anything that's on TV right now. I think it's very clever and I think people of all ages can really enjoy it, um, especially the comedy aspects of it. Um, it is Cartoon Network, so you know they're used to animation, they're used to great visual effects, so I think they definitely bring that into the series. So um, you know the visual effects are a lot you know, more advanced than what people are used to, especially in this kind of show. And it's just fun, and that's over 30 seconds, but it's a really fun time, and I think you'll enjoy it. Well, listen, uh, Level Up is, a, you know, it's certainly considered a kid's show, but I think uh, adults will find it very fun. There, you know, there's smart humor in it for adults. There's silly humor in it for adults and for kids. And, uh, no, I've seen some of the episodes, and uh, they are actually quite fun. The special effects are amazing, and the other actors do a really uh, great job. I enjoyed working with them, and you could see us having fun uh, while we were making the show. So, is that 30 seconds? Do I have five seconds left? See level up! The, if you like action, comedy, yelling, screaming, interesting monsters that are not explainable, is just something completely out of this world. If you're interested in gaming or sci-fi, then watch Level Up. Any, anyone who's a gamer, anyone who uh, has ever dreamed of, of, of what would happen if a game came to life, this is a show for you. It's funny, it's action-packed, it's got a lot of special effects, and our cast is phenomenal. I would just add to that that it is really also a show about friendship and if you and your friends bond over things and have adventures together, you will relate to this show because at its core it's really just a show about you know these four friends and the adventures that they go on and I really think that's a huge part of why we like it and love it so much is because of this friendship that we've been able to create through these characters. I mean, that's the thing, is it's relatable. We all, you know, anyone who grew up and uh, had friends, this is, you can, you can see yourself in here.